Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the historic Elida Fieldhouse, where tonight in the Division Four Regional Semifinals, the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains tangle with the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Dave Bowen and our entire WOSN crew. And Dave, we take a look at this matchup tonight, and you want to talk about by the numbers. Hopewell Loudon 19 and 7, Columbus Grove 17 and 8. Offensively, Hopewell Loudon comes in at 45 a game. Offensively, Columbus Grove 47 a game. Defensively, Hopewell 34. Defensively, Columbus Grove 35. It's like a mirror image. You're right, Danny. Hello, high school basketball fans. Danny, it's great to be your wingman tonight. Mirror image, two very, very comparable programs tonight. It's March, March 1st. Why not? March Madness regional style girls. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. For first, for the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains. Yeah, they got to know what flavor of gum she's chewing and who are we talking about? None other than Columbus Grove's Lauren Achmudi. She's an NWC and PCL first teamer. The Lady Chieftains have focused on how to stop her in preparation for this game. We'll see a lot of attention paid to Achmudi. The question is, will someone else from Grove step up and take advantage of the opportunity? Clean the glass with the link that Hopewell Loudon has tonight. Not only do the Lady Chieftains want to win the rebounding battle, they want to own it, Danny. A significant rebounding edge in their favor will be a key to victory. And then they got to take care of the rock. Coach Suter is concerned about the Bulldogs' defensive tenacity. It'll be imperative to keep the turnovers to a minimum and find open looks in the half-court offense in order to finish with the most important stat of the night, more points on the board for the Lady Chieftains side of the scoreboard. And for the Grove Bulldogs, they got here via a big time win over league rival Kaleida. What's the keys for them to get to the regional finals? They got to bring that defensive intensity, Danny. Olivia Bishop and Carly Kaufman lead the way offensively for Hopewell Loudon, both averaging 12 points per game. Coach Brian Schrader is going to one of his players to guard them hard and contest everything with Sage Clement leading the way on the defense event. Don't let it stick. The Grove Bulldogs are going to be outsized tonight. In order to find great looks, they must cut and pass the ball with enthusiasm. Do that and hit the boards. That's the recipe for success for Grove and thrive in prime time. Coach Schrader wants to see all of his players contribute tonight. Ock Moody is a proverbial straw, but there's so much more to this team. Shooting the ball with confidence, executing the game plan, and playing with Bulldog pride will lead to a date Saturday night in the regional championship game. A date to the regional finals is on the line. Danny Holbrook, Dave Bowen will have all the action right after these messages. Welcome back to the United Fieldhouse. Hopewell allowed the Chieftains to ready to tackle with the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Tonight's officials are Damon Coverman, Tracy Lindsay, and Zachary Yeckley. Let's take a look at our starters tonight for both teams for the Chieftains. Hopewell allowed. They'll go with number one, Taryn Hampton, a 5'6 senior, 4.2 a game. Number five, Kylie Maligon is a 5'4 junior, 2.7 a game. Number 11, Ashley Daniel is a 5'9 senior, at 6 foot a game. There's six points a game, excuse me. Isabella Bowell, she's number 20, 5'10 junior, 3.5 a game. And rounding out the starting five, number 33, Carly Kaufman, 5'11 junior at 12 points a game. For Columbus Grove, they'll start number two, Lauren Ockmoody, 17.2 a game. Number three, Jalen Sauter, 6.8 a game. Number five, Bryn Fortman, comes in at 6.2 a game. Number 12, Sage Clement at 5.5 a game. And number 23, the freshman, Nicole Nesby, at 6.9 a game. So we are underway, Dave. The NWC represented well again here tonight. Get a shot right away by number 12. <laughs> Reball on the way. Grove. Sage Clement, <laughs> Sage not Clement. shy about no, it. Absolutely not. Let's, let's bring him up. Let's shoot some threes here. Yep, <laughs> regional semifinal. <laughs> Who's going to take on Toledo Christian, who defeated Crestview in our first game tonight? Here come the Chieftains. They'll come in 19-7 and seven on the year. Your head coach, Steve Suter. Talked a little bit with coach before the game, and he said we got nothing to lose. We're playing with house money. Playing with house money, the Chieftains. Uh, right now, I like Columbus Grove's defensive look. They're giving Hopewell Loudon a different feel here, not guarding some players on the perimeter. Three ball on the way. Rebound comes down to the Chieftain, and it goes back up and in. And there you saw number 20 for the Chieftains. That's Isabella Bowell. She's the 5'10 junior, gets the rebound, sticks it back in, and they've got the 2-0 lead on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Idol Chiefs attacks the offensive glass, and again, Grove with a little bit of a different defensive look. Checkout responsibilities did not occur. Vital Chief takes advantage. She knocks it in on a free throw sponsor tonight. He's Lee Stamashevsky, Chicken, and Lima Wapa 
dog and dolphins called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So the dog's down early, 3-0, 7.04 to go here in the first quarter. Danny Holbrook, Dave Bowen from Elida Fieldhouse. I think they should have every tournament game here. Dave. I think every tournament game should be played here. I hear you, but man, <laughs> when you have to fight to get here, it does make it special. That's it does right. make it special. You're absolutely right. Hopewell Loudon gets a turnover. They're playing a, a little 2-3 zone defense in that first possession. So here's Ashley Daniel with the ball. She's guarded up top by Clement. She'll swing or tries to swing the ball. Good to her knee. Gets the ball out to Kaylee Kaufman. Excuse me, Carly Kaufman from the Chieftains. Take a look at uh, Hope Allowed. They've, they've got firepower on the bench as Olivia Bishop is a non starter. And she averages almost 12 a game off the bench. She and Kaufman lead the way offensively. She comes off the bench. There's a six saw, man. There you saw Kaufman trying to get inside. And there's the dogs running the floor. Ball goes underneath the basket. And they're going to say, was there a foul down low or step out of bounds? I believe she stepped out of bounds. You're right. So Columbus Grove's going to maintain possession. Akamudi taking the ball out of bounds. Let's see if it comes back to her. Lauren Akamudi triggers the ball in. Three ball from the left side, and it's good! Sage Clement tickles the twines as she knocks in the three ball, and it makes it 3-3 on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. That's her second three of the game. Came up short on the first one, but she does lead the, bull lead the Bulldogs from behind the arc at 43%. So just a fantastic game the other night with Columbus Grove and Kaleida as Lauren Ackman was just impressive with 23 of their 32 points. There you see a dribble drive on the left side. They'll kick it around, go back to the foul line, jump it from the foul line. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Souter. Souter gets it out to Ackman. Ackman brings it up the left side. Just swing it around. This is Souter. They'll go back to Clement. Clement dribble drive, foul line. Shot goes up from the left side. Rebound comes down. It's going to come down to the Chieftains. Still tied at three on the Hawkers and I lost scoreboard. Clement being aggressive offensively early on, and if you're Coach Schrader, you'll take that. She's hit the three, and then obviously you want a little more balanced scoring. He's happy to see someone besides Akmudi putting the ball in the basket. And there you see the Chieftains getting after the ball. Every loose ball. We're gonna have a health ball here. It's gonna go back to Hopewell Loud. They'll take the ball out right here in front of our WSN booth. You mentioned Akmudi's game in the district championship. Carly Kaufman had a great game in their district championship. Double-double, she's got the ball right now, kicks it out. 15 points, 13 boards. They, they held it. Here goes Sage Clement with a steal. She'll go up the right side. She gets a little contact. The ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down, and it's put back in by Akmudi. And there you saw the athleticism of Lauren Akmudi, who trails the play, gets the rebound, and sticks it back in to give Grove the 5-3 lead. Yeah, you're always hustling down the floor. Akmudi does it right there and is rewarded as the ball doesn't go in for Clement. She gets the offensive rebound and stick back. This Hopewell Loudon team, Dave, held McComb to 10 points in the second half of their district championship game. I don't care who you are, you hold another team to 10 points in one, one half. You're doing something right. Yeah, that's impressive. They came away with the 41-33 win. There's a triple drive from the baseline. Three ball from the left side on the way. It goes in and out. It was down, but it comes back out. That shot was up by Taryn Hampton. It looks really good. Akmudi brings it down the left side. Step back. Thought about taking the three. She'll swing it to Clement. Ball comes down. Hampton with the steal. Here comes Hampton up the left side. She's guarded by number five. And that's Brent Fortman. Three ball from the top. And it's good. Yeah. Ashley Daniels puts that one down. She leads the Chieftains from behind the arc at 36%. There's Akmudi. She says, if you can do it, I can can't do. That's off the mark. And Hopewell out leads 6 5. So there you see the range from Ashley Daniels. She knocks down the triple. Tonight's three point sponsor is Dale's Concrete and Decker with Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Such an apropos that a concrete company is sponsoring because threes are hard. They are. Oh, wow. That's a dad joke. And sometimes <laughs> they can be a brick as well. <laughs> We got, got him. the ball. We got them all, folks. Yes. <laughs> so here's the Chieftains. They push the ball down low. This is Hampton out top. She'll swing it around. Swing it over to Battle Cheese. They go inside to Hampton. Hampton throws it back up. It's corralled by Souter. Souter's going to take it down the right side. She wisely pulls back. Gets it over to Akmu. Akmu with a little dribble drive left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Portman. Portman misses that shot. Here comes Hampton for the Chieftains. She'll go down the right side, guarded by Clement, not about taking it up. Great job by 
Clement from the defensive end. There's a three ball from the left side. Rebound comes down to Akwudi. Akwudi brings the ball down the floor. She finds it on the left side. Shot goes up, and it's good. And a great job by number five, Bryn Fortman, of leading the break. She gets to the left side, scores, and it's 7-6 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Yeah, undercooked the shot, did the Lady Chieftains, and as a result, Columbus Grove was able to get in transition, get an easy layup. There they try to go back into Carly Kaufman. Carly Kaufman, the 5'11 junior, leads this team to 12 points a game. So you see her presence on the floor. They run just about everything through her on the post. They do, and Nicole Nesby guarding her down there. Nesby only had two points in that last game against Kaleida, but oh, they, they were big ones. <laughs> they were the two biggest ones of the night, brother, let me tell you. The look on her face when she knocked that shot in, I was sitting right there courtside, and it was fantastic to watch those girls play. There's a steal by Akmudi, and Hope Loudon gets another steal on the other side. Hampton goes out top with the ball guarded by Clement. Hampton dribble drive, foul line, little spin, shot goes up, and almost in, and it comes out. Rebound comes down to Clement. Great defense by Sage Clement right there. Made Hampton really work hard to even get the shot off. Abby Stick showing now in the game for the Dogs. They'll swing the ball around. Akmudi thought about taking it. She'll swing it to the left side. So goes over to Kendall Palti, who's now checked in for Grove. They'll go back to Clement. Clement thought about taking the three on her own. They'll go into the middle. This is Paulie. Paulie with a little jumper, and she's going to be fouled. Kendall Paulie with the foul line jumper. She gets hit on the arm, so she'll go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw strike. And the personal foul is on Hampton. That ball was right there. She just could not resist. It just was too, too delicious looking like free dessert on your birthday. <laughs> right. She fouled her. That puts number 21, Kendall Paulie, at the line. We see the replay again. She's squaring up. Hampton comes in, oh, and I'm going to hack you across the arm. What am I doing? I mean, your reaction to that. The reaction from Hampton was, I can't believe I just did that. First shot goes off the mark. She'll get his second one. Grove leads 7 to 6, 159 to go. That one also off the mark. Rebound comes down to Hampton and the Chieftains. 156 to go. The Eddie Hobart Dave Bowen from Elida Fieldhouse for the girls' Division IV regional semifinal. We've already got one team in the finals. That's Toledo Christian. They defeated the Crestview Knights. And they are going to be a tough task to take out of this tournament. And there you see a turnover and we'll go back to the board. You know, seven to six here, first quarter. I think both teams are fighting through some jitters sure, here sure. a little bit. Regional semifinal. Big crowd on tap. Big, Big crowd. crowd. Yeah. But when number two has the ball for Grove, her teammates settle down and then she's running the offense, getting it started. This is Aquin from the right side. So double drive the foul and kick it back out. Fortman from the left side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Aquin. She'll go back inside to Palti. Palti goes dribble drive baseline. She'll kick it back out. Three ball on the way from the right side. It's off the mark. Abby Stecksholdy misses that shot. And the rebound comes down to the Chieftains. Here comes Hanson leading the break. 8 to go here in the first quarter. Grove leads 7 to 6. I'll move the ball to the right side. They'll go back out to Hampton. Hampton with a little 12 foot jumper off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ockmoody. Lauren Ockmoody always around the basketball. That was Olivia Bishop. Excuse me. That's Olivia Bishop here with a steal. She'll come down the left side. This is Bishop going to the middle. And no call made. And now they're going to say a charge. Olivia Bishop. She was going to take the basket, or uh, take the ball to the basket with authority. She wanted to make sure you had her name correct, Danny. <laughs> yes, right. And as a result, Lauren Ockmoody sets her up. Great replay from our WOSN crew. Ockmoody takes the punishment, but gets the charge. Columbus Grove basketball. I had the opportunity last week after that game to interview Lauren Ockmoody. And what a great kid. And she was so excited for her teammates. Not the fact that she had a bunch of points. She was excited for her teammates to get a go to the regional tournament. It's something they'll never forget. So I was really impressed with her. Here's Ockmoody from the right side. And off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Chieftains. We're at 20 seconds here in the first quarter. Here comes number three, Sydney Brickner with the ball. They're trying to go inside. This is Battle Cheese. The ball goes off the mark, and we go back to the Chieftains with 11 seconds to go. Nice double down defense by Ock Moody again. She's made her presence known more on defense than offense. She only has two points right now, but boy, she's been a factor at both ends of the floor. Battle Cheese and Kaufman in there together make a pretty good bookend. There's the shot off the mark. Here comes Ock Moody with the ball. We're at six seconds. Ock Moody 
Brings it down. Does she know the time? I don't know. She doesn't know the time. Trying to get a shot. Doesn't know the time, and that will end the first quarter. So after one quarter of play from the Ida Fieldhouse, the Palmer's Grove Bulldogs lead the Hopewell Loud Chieftain 7 to 6. We'll have second quarter action right now. Tonight's scoreboard is provided by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at HawkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. So Dave, both teams kind of feeling each other out here. Not a lot of scoring, more defense, and a little bit of nerves you can see on both ends. You nailed it. Nerves a little bit. We see it in the shooting. Columbus Grove, 3 for 13 from the field for 23%. Hopewell Loudon, 2 for 10 for 20%. One for one from the line is Hopewell Loudon, 0 for 2 Grove. Rebounds 10 to 8 in Grove's favor. Four turnovers for Grove, six for the Chieftains. There you see Ockman be cut to the middle. Clement found her and kicks it back out to Clement. Three ball off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ockman. And right now, Lauren Ockman is everywhere. And there you're going to get a foul as number two, Olivia Bishop, runs into uh, Clement from Columbus Grove as they collide near the scores team. We're going to see the replay here. Ockmoody kicks it out to Clement. <laughs> Obviously going for the basketball. Yeah. Good hustle both ways. Olivia Bishop picks up that personal. The Chieftains staying in that 2-3 zone. It's been good to them in the first quarter. They'll swing the ball around. Clement pushes down low. Sauer with the little shot there that goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Olivia Bishop. She'll get the ball over to Ashley Daniel. She of the lone three right now for Hopewell Loud. Swing it back to Bottle Cheese. Free throw jumper goes up. It's off the mark. Jumper goes up by Kylie Maligon. Here come the Grove Bulldogs on the right side. That shot's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Chief. So nobody, nobody's knocking anything in right now as we are staled at 7-6. to six. you got to think, though, if Columbus Grove can continue to get those breakouts off of missed shots, they're going to start hitting some of those layups. They're doing a great job of getting the ball down the floor in transition. Olivia Bishop thought about throwing that one up, and she'll swing it over to Battle Cheese. Battle Cheese kicks it back over to Malagon. Malagon looks to dribble drive. Three ball on the way from the left side, and it's good. There you saw Ashley Daniel. That's her second one, and she gives Hope a lot of the seven lead on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Yeah, got her puppy set, stepped into it. Nothing but the bottom of the net, Dan. Danny, great shot. Tonight's three-point shots are sponsored by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipsing for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. So with the kick ball, it's going to be under out of bounds for Grove. See if they can run their set and get a good look. Right there it is. Souter runs right into the empty spot, knocks in the little three-foot jumper, and she ties it up at 9-9 on the Hawker Drive all scoreboard. Great okay. job by Souter recognizing what the defense was giving. Well, she's the second leading scorer on this Grove Bulldog team. Daughter of the head coach of the boys of program. The boys That's team. right. Chris Sauter averages seven points a game. There's another three ball on the way, and there you see the range from Carly Kaufman. The 5'11 post knocks down the triple, and that's another Dale's concrete three. Yeah, she had her feet set as well. Good looking shot from behind the arc. She's second on the team behind the three point line at 29%. Your post player can go out there and knock them down like that. That really puts pressure on the defense. Definition of a stretch five. That's if you right. Will. There they try to get the ball into Nicole Nesby, and she drops it out of bounds. So the young freshman there, a little bit of nerves maybe as the ball goes out of bounds. It'll go back to Hopewell out. They lead 12-9 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. In the half court set, Columbus Grove has really struggled against this 2-3 zone. They're doing, nice, doing a nice job of passing the ball. They're not putting the ball on the, on the deck but maybe there's some times they need to get the ball in low ball position and look for those penetration lanes, draw draw two defenders and find the open team. Here's Maligon guarded out top by Ock Moody. She'll swing it over to Taryn Hampton. They'll bring it out top. This is Ashley Daniel. She just knocked in a big three for her club. They'll swing it over to Hampton. Hampton dribble drive against Brim Fortman. Here you see Carly Kaufman handles the ball, shoots the three, goes down low. They'll push the ball inside. They try to go onto the baseline. Kick it out. That's Anna Daniel. We're going to see who wins this possession. Good offensive ball movement. Good de perimeter defense. Good defense all the right way around for Grove. Here's Kaufman. Little turnaround. Shot goes up. Off the mark. She kind of looked like she kind of got pushed on a little bit. No foul called. Here come the Bulldogs, and Jalen Souter brings the ball down. Ball goes into the backcourt, picked up by 
Clement kind of goes over to Ockmoody. Ockmoody skip pass across the floor to Bryn Fortman. Ockmoody from the left side for three. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. And it looks like Hopewell Loud is going to take a timeout. They're going to blink first because neither team is used to timeout <laughs> with 4.23 to go. Great timeout by Coach Suter. We're going to take a break. You're watching Regional Ladies Division IV Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the historic Elida Fieldhouse. There you see the coaches tonight, Brian Schrader for Columbus Grove and Steve Suter for Hopewell Loud. So they've got their teams all the way to the regional semifinals. And listen, Dave, there's nothing like I say it all the time. I love district basketball, but boy, you get to regionals. You can smell state. You can exactly. taste it a little bit. You know what's in front of you. <laughs> yeah, you, you never want to lose the first game of, of the four-game <laughs> right. tournament at regional or district, and then when you get to that second one, you don't want to lose that That's one right. either. You're, you're just playing so hard. Every possession is so very, very critical. Here come the Chieftains. This is number 23, Anna Daniel, as she kicks it inside to Coffin. Coffin with a little turnaround. Ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Abby Stecksholte. She gets it out to Clement. Great Clement defense by Nicole Nesby down there, forcing that tough shot for Coffin. Ockmoody throws the ball, tries to find Sauter in the corner. Ball goes out of bounds. They're going to say, boy, no problem. A lot of the student sections. <laughs> I think they may change that goal. Yeah, they're going to get together and talk about it. I like this with the officials. So That's I. Tracy Lindsay and Zach Yeckley. And it's a good thing to hope a lot of the students are there to help them out. <laughs> Our camera crew showing this to the session. So they hope a lot of the kids are pretty happy about that. And they got it right. They did. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. And I love the way they got together and got it right. So, so Coach Schrader's going to call yeah. timeout. Coach Schrader's going to take a timeout. Hope well loud leads 12 9, 348 to go. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delta. It's called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So, Dave, we saw in the first game a lot of transition basketball, but here we're seeing a lot of half-court sets, both teams trying to feel each other out. Yeah, this one's turned into a half-court slobber knocker, if you will, Danny. Both teams really, really looking to attack. Groves had some breakouts. They haven't converted. They've struggled in the half-court, as has the Lady Chieftains up to this point. I'll tell you, I am very impressed right now with Carly Kaufman, the 5'11 junior, with the ball right now in her hands. Not afraid to put the ball on the deck, and she also goes down post up big and has a nice touch. And you know, great job by Hopewell Loudon there, reversing the ball, and they get the look. There you see number three, Sydney Brickner, knocks in the shot, and Hopewell Loudon got the biggest lead of the night at 14-9 on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. Again, Columbus Grove has to dissect this 2-3 zone defense, and they're doing a lot of standing, and there's a turnover. There you see a nice steal. And that steal was by Carly Coffin. She's doing a little bit of everything right now for her Chieftains. As they lead 14-9, 2.41 to go. There, Coffin gets the ball, loses a little bit. She'll swing it around. This is Anna Daniel with the ball out top. Goes back into Coffin. Coffin guarded by Nesby. She'll swing it to the opposite side. Double drive to the foul line. They'll kick it back out. Hopewell Loudon being very patient. Here comes Taryn Hampton with the drive. She throws the ball away, and it'll go back to Columbus Grove. So unforced errors, Dave. They kill you every time. Yeah, Columbus Grove, sticky man-to-man -man defense right there. But the unforced error does occur. Good penetration. Jump stop. Find your teammate. Again, Columbus Grove, Coach Schrader's got to figure out how to get more movement with his team against this 2-3 zone. The elbows open at times. This is Clement with the ball on top. Lock Moody with the ball. Dribble drive. Baseline takes it up. Off the mark. She is really having a tough half here. She's only got two for the Bulldogs. Here comes Kaufman leading the break. Little step through. She misses that shot. Rebound comes down to Souter. Souter on the outlet to Ock Moody and just overthrows Ock Moody. Right idea there by number three, Jalen Souter. But again, overcooked it. She goes to her limb. Yeah, she really has great footwork she does. for the five, you know, playing the five position for this Hopewell Loudon basketball team. They're looking for her in every possession, and rightly so. Absolutely. Here come the Chieftains at 14 9 with 139 to go in the Hopewell Loudon student section on their feet. There's a three ball from the left side. That ball's off the mark. Rebound comes down. It goes off Ockmoody. She throws it back in. It's corralled by number 20, Battle Cheese. Another shot goes up, and Ockmoody goes up for the rebound. She's going to be knocked down. 
And we'll have a foul. It looks like it's going to go on Carly Cotton. We're going to see the replay here, the carry insurance replay, the missed shot, the rebound by Ockman. Yeah, you're right. Carly Kaufman gets her with the body. Our Coach score. Schrader looked at the scoreboard right away right. and was thinking, are we in the one and one Because right now you're trying to find a way to get some open Anything. shots. Anything, you're absolutely you're right. Any place you can. Good call. Our scoreboard tonight is provided by Hawker Drywall and Plaster. Visit us at HawkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. Here's Clemmel with the drive. She'll keep it back out. Foreman from the right side, off the mark, and nothing falling right now for Grove. Clement will corral. She'll go back to Akinuti. That zone is causing them all kinds of problems right now. Go Ock Moody up top over to Clement. Clement pushes it down low. They'll go middle to Palti. Palti kicks it back out. They'll go Ock Moody across to Clement. Back to. <laughs> They're moving the ball against that zone, Dave. They're doing a real nice job yeah. finding the dead spot. There's Ock Moody with the penetration, which I like seeing, but she's got to get in there, jump stop, and kiss it off the window, unable to connect on that one. So Ock Moody misses that one. Come the Chieftains with 32 seconds to go. Carly Kaufman out top. Kaufman's got three points right now. She is dictating both ends of the floor as we see it. Down to 20 seconds. She'll dribble drive on the baseline. Clement does a nice job of stopping the drive. And then you saw Souter kick the or push the ball out with her offhand. It'll go back to Hopewell Loud with 13 seconds to go. Coach Suter yelling out directions right there. I think he was content to hold the ball and go for the last shot, but Ashley Daniel felt like she had a driving lane. They maintained possession. Nicole Nesby checks back in for Columbus Grove, and Olivia Bishop checks back in for Hopewell out. This is Hampton with the ball. With a 12 footer from the left side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Souter with five seconds. Souter with the ball, pushes it down. Three ball on the way, and it's off the mark. And Nez thought about putting it up, and that's no good. So after one half of basketball, the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 14-9. We'll have second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse for second half action. Hopewell Loudon Chieftains lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 14-9 at the start of the third quarter. And Dave, we take a look at the first half, and you look at Hopewell Loudon averaging 45 a game, Columbus Grove averaging 47 a game, and what a 14-9 game. Yeah, the temperature outside, it's in the 60s, but in the Elida <laughs> Fieldhouse pretty cold, tonight, pretty cold. it's frigid. Um, Hopewell Loudon shot 25% in the first half, Columbus Grove 23%. Halftime for both coaches, I'm sure it was more of a checkup from the neck up. There wasn't much excellent and Owen going on. It's about talking about the base that we have built over the last 25, 26 games. Ladies, let's get back to that and play our type of basketball, and the shots will start to fall. And that's what they got to be doing. You know, um, Kaufman and Bishop are combined one for nine. Akmudi one for six from the floor. Akmudi does have ten rebounds for the Grove Bulldogs. He's rebounding. Good. But here Great we go. Year. Second half action. See which team can break out of the shooting slump. So here go the Chieftains. They'll take the ball over first here in the third quarter. This is Battle Cheese out top. She'll swing it around. They'll go back inside to Carly Kaufman. Carly Kaufman at the high post. A little dribble drive by number five, Kylie Maligon. They'll go back out top to Taryn Hampton. Swinging around to the right side. This is Battle Cheese with the ball. She'll kick it back out. Go back inside to Kaufman. Kaufman kind of goes to the right side. Thought about shooting the ball, but they'll kick it out. And they throw the ball away. So an unforced error there by the Chieftains. And maybe Columbus Grove gets something going on the offensive end. And I'm not going to go with complete. I'm going to disagree with you a little bit. Not a completely unforced sure, error. Sure, sure. You know, Columbus Grove defense right there was really strong. Kept them out of the paint. Made it really tough. And the turnover did result. So a friendly disagreement. Yeah, and our fr and, and Dave Bowen up 1-0 on friendly disagreements. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you know it's all right, Dave. So here come the Grove Bulldogs. 6.59 to go. Got to find something on the offensive end as they are down 14 to 9. And they go inside to Nesby, and Nesby gets the shot off, and she is fouled. And the foul will go against 
Ashley Daniel. What I like that Nicole Nesby did right there in the zone, you teach your post players post on a body. That way you can feel where the defense is. She did that on the weak side. Her teammate found her, and she gets a power shot, draws the foul, goes to the line, shoots two. She goes to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So Nicole Nesby, the 5'11 freshman, knocks in the first one, and she makes the second one look just as good, Dave. And she looked comfortable with the line. The dogs are down 14-11 on the Hawkeye Drywall scoreboard. Picks up her first two points of the game, where, again, she is tied for second on this girl Bulldog squad in scoring at seven points per game. Here's Hampton on the left side. She swings the ball around. 6.43 to go. Hope 11 leads 14-11. to 11. This is Malagon up top, guarded by Ock Moody, and there's a kick ball to go out of bounds right in front of the Hope will allow the student section. Again, Coach Brian Schrader and his staff, they have watched a lot of film. They have scouted intensely because you can see there are some players for the Lady Chieftains that they just don't feel like they need to guard on the perimeter, and they're not. And there's a steal by the dogs. This is Bryn Hampton with the ball. She's double teamed up top. She'll go back to Ock Moody. Ock Moody with the ball up top. Swing it over to Clem Clements. Excuse me. Back in the middle. This is Souter. Souter kicks it out. They'll go back to Ock Moody up top. Dogs down 14 to 11. Three ball on the way, and it's good. There's another Dales concrete three ball as Clement knocks in the three, and we're all knotted at 14. Sage hit one early in the game and then didn't score again. Third quarter here in the first part of it. She hits another three, gives her six on the night. Here you got a good battle up top of Ashley Daniel and Clement guarding her. This is Hampton with the ball. She'll swing it around. They'll go back to Kylie Malagon. Malagon goes inside, tried to push the ball into Kaufman. Ball hits the deck. Here comes Ock Moody on the right side. She'll take it up and she'll score. Lord, Ock Moody knocks it in to make it 16-14 on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. Maybe that's what's going to take to get Ock Moody going. Columbus Grove on a 7-0 run coming out of halftime. We say the first four minutes of the third quarter are so very, very important. Columbus Grove is taking advantage. Go back inside the Coffin. Coffin with a nice little runner, but she misses that shot. Here comes Ock Moody and the dogs. They're up 16-14. Three ball on the left side. Off the mark, rebound comes down to Ashley Daniel, and there's going to be a foul. Looks like they're going to get Souter on the flat foul. Jalen Souter, the 5'8", senior forward. We see 50-50 ball goes to the Grove Bulldogs. Clement with it, gets it to Ock Moody. Here she comes, lays it in nice and easy. Easy, the leading score at 17 points per game. Lauren Ock Moody, she has four right now, but she puts her team ahead with that bucket. Olivia Bishop has entered the game now for Hopewell Loudon. Sydney Brickner in the game also, so they're going to their bench to get some scoring here. There's a three ball on the way, and it's good. Olivia Bishop knocks in another Dale's Concrete three. Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lip sync for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Hopewell Loudon back on top, 17-16. Bishop with the one-two step, kicks that right leg to the right a little bit instead of straight at the basket, but nothing but the bottom of the net for her right there. Really good medicine for Hopewell Loudon. Clement again from the three line. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down. It's chased down by Ock Moody. A great job by her to be in the right spot. They'll go back to Clement. Clement thought about shooting it again. Goes back outside. Ock Moody from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Clement. They get another shot. Here's Brent Fortman from the out top of the key. Off the mark. Ball's going to come right over by the WSN booth. And they're going to say it goes back to Hopewell Loudon. So not the shots they're looking for right now. The nothing's falling for the dogs, but they still down one, 17-16. I get her rationale, but Clement had that offensive rebound on the left block. I would have loved to have seen her take a pound dribble, up fake, and go back up strong, sure. try and get the end one. But she kicked it out to the open shooter. So Brickner loses the ball, and it goes out of bounds, but it was last touched by Ock Moody down on the baseline. So a good break there for the Lady Chieftains as they lead 17-16. A nice warm night tonight, Dave Bowen, as the field house is <laughs> pretty hot. <laughs> we talked about that earlier. The doors are open, and uh, early March games usually don't get 65-degree weather, but we've got it here tonight. So there's a the Chief, and there's Carly Kaufman, and you see her athleticism as she drove the baseline. The ball just misses off the mark. Here come the Bulldogs. They'll come down and transition. This is Clement on the baseline. She'll kick it back out to Souter. Souter, three ball on the way, and it's good. Jalen Souter 
knocks in another Dale's Concrete 3, and the Dogs have the lead at 19-17 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. The honorable mention Northwest Conference selection, second team PCL selection, Jalen Souter shot that one with tremendous confidence. You're exactly right. I was going to say, she looked really confident in that shot. Dad's got to be happy about that. No doubt. So here come the Chieftains down 19-17. Sydney Brickner thought about shooting the three ball. They'll swing it around to the left side. A little dribble drive up the baseline. Rebound comes down. Shot goes back up by number two, Olivia Bishop, and she's going to be fouled. She'll go to the free throw line, and she'll shoot two. Olivia Bishop, she's just wiry, you know? Yeah, she's, she's yeah. going to see the replay here um, on the three for Sodder. Good looking. Good looking for him. Good, good rotation, shot. yeah. Big bucket, but uh, again, Bishop. This is that first one. She just seems to be around the basketball wherever it's at, especially on the offensive end for the Lady Chieftains. Abby Stick showed and Kendall Palti into the game for the Dogs. Lady Bishop with another free throw at our Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken. I'm a Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Bishop gets one for two, and she's right at that mark for the season, 51% on the year. So the Dogs got a chance to go up by a few here as they've not led much of this game at all tonight. They'll swing it around the perimeter. This is Clement. Well, thought about taking the three. They'll swing it over to Akmudi. Akmudi goes in the Nesby. Nesby takes the shot up. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Chieftains will corral it. That's number 11, Ashley Daniel. And overall, during the course of this game, in that 2-3 zone, the Lady Chieftains have done a really good job of checking out. Saw it on display there. No way was a Grove Bulldog going to get that rebound. Here's Bishop with a dribble drive on the right side. A nice job by her. The shot goes up. She just misses it. She was at point blank range, and the ball goes off the mark. A little bit of contact, but nothing called. It'll bring the ball back down. Akmudi will bring it down for the Dogs. Clement from the left side, thought about taking three. They'll go into Palti. Palti turns around, squares up, and knocks it in. Kendall Palti knocks in the deuce, and she gives Grove their biggest lead of the night at 21-18 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. The 5-7 freshman squares up. Sometimes those are the toughest shots to make. The yeah, she hesitated. The wide she? <laughs> open look. But, yeah, used the rim, the backboard, and the rim, and it fell through for a nice touch for Here's Baldy. Bishop with the ball goes back over to Carly Kaufman. She misses that shot, a wide open shot. She misses that. There's Stick Shorty with the ball. Akmudi thought about it. She'll go inside to Palti. Palti goes back to Akmudi. Akmudi a little dribble drive. Here's Clement from the left side, off the mark. Rebound comes down. This is Ashley Daniel from Hopewell Loudon. She's got the last three defensive rebound for the Chieftains. And Coach Suter is going to take a timeout. That'll give us a chance to regroup and take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. And welcome back to the Lida Fieldhouse. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Hucker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at HuckerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. So they Hope well, Loudon Chieftains take a much needed timeout as they are down 21 to 18. And I said it's the biggest lead of the night for Grove, but that's true. They, you know, they haven't led much at all tonight. And there we see them throw the ball away, and they're going to say Grove touched it last. And as, Hope, go ahead. As we said, you know, the offense has been at a premium, and that's why that three point lead for Grove <laughs> is substantial because they played from behind most of this contest. But right now, I think. The momentum is on Grove's side a little bit. They're staying with that tenacious man-to-man -man defense, and they only have two team fouls. And there's a nice block by Nicole Nesby. As you saw, number three, Sydney Brickner, tries to cut back door on the baseline, and she's thwarted by the 5'10 freshman. Yeah, Nicole Nesby has made her presence known a little bit here in the third quarter. The honorable mention PCL player, most improved player on Coach Schrader's team this year. She's really, really taken advantage of the opportunity to be on the varsity team as a freshman. Here's Ockmoody from the left side, three ball up, and it's good, Lord Ockmoody, as she dials up another Dales concrete three, and she gives Grove the 24 8 18 lead on the Hucker Drywall scoreboard. And you know, in that half court possession, Columbus Grove did not put the ball on the floor at all. Just great passing. They didn't let it stick, and they found Akmudi all alone with rhythm in that right corner for three. There's a turnaround jumper there by Olivia Bishop, and she's fouled as she makes the shot. 
An unbelievable turnaround by Olivia Bishop. She gets the ball down low, scores, and she'll go to the line for old-fashioned three. Yeah, like we said, she's wiry, she's long, she almost plays better, shoots better <laughs> when there's contact. <laughs> she's really good when there's contact. I can remember coaching a young man who coached best, and I would talk about, hey, when he's wide open, he's not going to make it. He needs to run into somebody <laughs> to score, and that's a little bit of what we're seeing with Olivia Bishop. She misses that shot. Another Lee's famous recipe free throw there. And that, what's interesting about that foul, Dave, is that is Clement's third foul on the night. So that's something we need to be watching for. Nesby goes to Souter down low. They'll go back to Akmudi from the left side. Back to back threes. Lauren Akmudi. I'm telling you, Dave, shut the microwave. She's getting hot. I'm telling you, she gets another Dale's concrete three. She's getting hot, and it's a carbon copy. <laughs> that was not an instant replay. Good ball movement by Columbus Grove. They reverse it to Akmudi in the corner. We see the replay, Akmudi from the right corner, nothing but the bottom of the net. Grove takes the 27-20 lead. You're watching regional basketball, WOSN. Welcome back to the Light of Fieldhouse. We're after three quarters of play. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead 27 to 20. Let's take a look at our upcoming schedule as we've got a ton of games for your viewing entertainment. Thursday night, Van Wert, St. Mary, Shawnee, Defiance. I'll be on the call for both of those games. Liberty Center, Ottawa, Glendorf Girls Regional Semifinals at 10 o'clock. Friday, the Division IV District Finals from the Light at 6. The Division IV District Finals from Defiance at 7.30. And we'll have three other big games here all weekend long. So. Here come the Bulldogs, Dave, up seven and a little bit of a luxury now. They can kind of kind of run their offensive sets and take a little time. Big third quarter for Columbus Grove as Akmudi comes to the other corner. Off the mark, Akmudi going for three in a row, and this place would have went crazy. Absolutely, but an 18-6 third quarter for Columbus Grove. Again, they only scored nine the whole first half. They showed what they can do. They have that offensive firepower, put it on display in quarter number three. And there's a jumper off the mark by number 20, Isabel Bautelchies, and they left her completely open as she takes a dribble and comes up and shoots about a 12-footer, but it goes off the mark. So here come the dogs up 27-20 with 7.15 to go and a trip to the regional finals on the line with a chance to play the first game winner, Toledo Christian, as they defeated Crestview in the opener. Here's Souter, she kicks it back out. Over to Fortman. Fortman holds the ball. See if we can get the stats in from the third quarter real quick. Hopewell Louth was 2 for 9 for 22%. Grove 6 for 12, 50%. That's why they jumped out to this lead. Rebounds 5 for Loudon. Hopewell Loudon 7 for Grove. Turnovers 4 each. Free throw line. The Chieftains 1 for 3. Columbus Grove 2 for 2. Much better shooting quarter for Columbus Grove. Four Foul out four. top by Isabella Balachese. She picks up her first foul. Columbus Grove will inbounds the ball in front of their bench. So the question right now, and I think we're going to see, yep, they're going to switch. The Lady Chieftains are going to go man-to-man -man now. There's Ock Moody with the ball. She's going to be guarded up top by Taryn Hampton. So a good matchup there of two really athletic players for both squads. This is Souter up top. She's guarded by Anna Daniel. And Columbus Grove, they have a good motion offense, but they've gone against the zone the whole night. Right now, they got to find rhythm and penetration. Akmudi does right there. Akmudi gets a nice screen from Nesby. She misses that shot, but they track down the offensive rebound, and there's a steal, exactly what the Chieftains needed, and that's Taryn Hampton with the steal. Stop and scores. That's what the Lady Chieftains need to have. They got the stop. Let's see if they can connect on this offensive possession. Anna Daniel with the ball, and she gets it over to Carly Kaufman. They've kind of went away from Kaufman a little bit in this half. Kaufman with a nice pass and a backdoor cut, and a nice scoop and score by the Chieftains there. Number five, Kylie Malagon, and she makes it 27-22 on the Hawker Drive wall scoreboard. Big offensive possession right there for Hopewell Loudon to cut the lead to five. Here come the dogs up 27-22. Trying to salt this one away. And there's another steal by the Chieftains. And there you saw Taryn Hampton getting her hands in there and getting a steal. They'll kick it back down. This is Hampton up top, guarded by Ock Moody. 5-13 to go here in the fourth quarter. Danny Hork, Dave Bowen from the Elida Fieldhouse Regional Semifinals. Winner goes to the finals to play Toledo Christian. There's a little jumper from the right side. That's way off the mark. Rebound comes down to Clement. She'll get it over to Akmudi, and Akmudi will walk it up the floor, taking a 
little bit of talent. She's walking it up, and Coach Schrader's yelling, push it up, push <laughs> right, it up. I saw that. Uh, <laughs> all right, Coach, we'll work on that, but I think uh, we're going to be okay here. Oh, we thought about the three ball. They get it over to Brent Fortman. Fortman in the corner. So we'll go back out top to Ackmudi. Ackmudi guarded by Hampton. But I think Coach Schrader senses, again, uh, his team has done a lot of standing against that zone and been effective sure. against it. Yeah. But now that the Chieftains are in man-to-man, -man, he wants to see his rhythm reestablish itself. Not going to happen there as Nicole Nesby picks up the illegal uh, screen. Yeah, absolutely. Nicole Nesby with the foul there. So Hopewell Loud trying to crawl back in this one, down five. And Coach Schrader's going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 4.28 to go. The Grove Bulldogs lead the Chieftains 27-22. Our three-point sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsing for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale's Concrete is our three-point sponsor. So the Grove Bulldogs with 4.28 to go, lead 27 to 22, trying to hang on to this lead to get to a regional final game with Toledo Christian. Hope Well Loud wants to get to that game as well. They'll go inside to Kaufman. Kaufman guarded by Nesby. A little turnaround by Kaufman. She's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Akmudi. Akmudi kicks it out to Souter, and Souter will hold up until Akmudi can come get the ball. Good defense again by Nicole Nesby, making it tough for Carly Kaufman, one of the leading scorers for the Lady Chieftains. There's a double drive by Akmudi. She'll take it up and scores, and she's fouled. Are you kidding me? Lauren Akmudi showing you why. She is everything to this Bulldog basketball team. Yeah, just great presence with the basketball. She sees the driving lane but keeps her head up, little hesitation, and then gets the hoop and the harm. We're going to see it on the carry insurance replay right there. Gets her hacked across the arm, off the window. And Dave, I liked how she kept her eyes on the rim, exactly. kept her head up, and that is a great lesson for young players out there. Keep your eyes up, keep your head up. So Lauren Ackman, who go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line, and she knocks it in for the old-fashioned three. Ock Moody has 13. She had two at the break, so a great second half for her. Yeah, she has been the spark for this second half offensively for Columbus Grove. So this is Bishop out top. She'll swing it back around. There's a double drive at the foul line. Shot goes up by Brickner. Goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Souter. She leads the break. She loses the ball, and it's picked up by Hampton. Hampton lets the offense clear, and she'll bring it down the floor. She'll go back outside to Carly Kaufman. Three ball on the way. It's off the mark. Hawk Moody with the rebound. Kind of a, a quick rushed shot there by Kaufman. But as we've seen, she can hit that oh, outside absolutely. shot. Absolutely. We'll bring Hampton with the ball outside. Swing it around to Clement. Clement loses the ball, but she gets it back. Now they're double teaming out top. And they're going to say a foul on Olivia Bishop. Coach, Coach Schrader, yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> Coach is being intense with his team. I think he's asking for more movement. Don't stand now. Again, they're in man-to-man. -man. Let's, let's do what we do. There's a reason they wanted to play zone against us, because they're concerned about our ability to take them off the dribble to get to the basket. We've got to be moving, though, to make that happen. When it gets it over to Fortman. Swing it up to Ockley up top. She's guarded by Hampton. Ock Moody will dribble drive. She'll keep it around the perimeter. 2.52 to go. Grove leads 30-22 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Katie Holbrook, Dave Bowen from Elida Fieldhouse in the Division IV Regional Semifinal. Grove content on taking the time to throw the ball away there. And there you saw Bryn Fortman cut to the basketball, and Jalen Souter just overthrows her. Yeah, the two seniors not on the same page on that one. Again, we'll credit the Chieftain defense, made it tough for them, and we're going to have a timeout for Grove. So we're going to take a timeout here with 2.40 to go. Columbus Grove leads 30-22. to 22. You're watching High School Girls Regional Action on WOSN. Thirty to 22 with 2.32 to go, trying to close this one out. And the Chieftains trying desperately to get any offensive. And there's a three ball from the top of the key. Goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ockmoody. And that's about number 14 for Lauren Ockmoody as she has been a force on the board tonight. Yeah, she had 10 at halftime, as we said. Ball gets knocked around. Chieftains steal it. A little up and under. And they score. They give her the bucket. Uh, Anna, excuse me, that is number 11, Ashley Daniel, with a little scoop and score there. And she's going to go to the line to cut this lead to five. 
Ashley Daniel getting to the rim off of the turnover. A lot of body contact, 50-50 ball. She gets it and attacks the rim. The old-fashioned three-point play. And she knocks it in for another Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw. And here comes Akmudi. The Grove Dogs lead 30-25 to with 2.08 to go. Souter being pressured. They'll go back to Akmudi. Now they're double-teaming the ball. So Grove tries to move it a little quicker. Clement gets it back to Nesby. Nesby with the ball. She's confronted by Kaufman. Trying to get the ball. There's another. They get a foul. Looks like on Bishop. So Nesby was cornered in the uh, corner closest to the booth here and uh, got lucky with a the foul there. Yeah, just the 15th foul for the Lady Chieftains. And again, that last possession down there for Hopewell Loudon. Just won this game. You thought maybe Columbus Grove could start icing it away a little bit, the three-point play. But there's a wide open there's look. A nice job by Jalen Souter as they run that out-of-bounds play to perfection. Jalen Souter, trigger man, and goes to the hoop and gets the bucket. We haven't seen that clean of a look all night long as both defenses have been really, really stout. They'll go back into Kaufman. Kaufman guarded by Nesby. And there you see Akmudi come across to try to help on the back side. And they're going to get her on the foul. Well, I think she a little bit of a push, maybe reached. See if we see the replay. No, here's a nice cut on that under out of bounds set. The right. delayed look. Yes. And that's what they got off of it, off the screen on the baseline. Souter with the bucket. They go a little lob pass to Kaufman. Kaufman takes it up and she scores off the glass. Carly Kaufman knocks in the deuce. She's got five on the night. There's a timeout on the floor with 1.25 to go. The Grove Bulldogs lead 32 to 27. You're watching high school action on WOSN. Borders provided by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Dave, you look at Hope Aladdin in that district championship game, they turned the ball over 21 times. Now, they've done a decent job tonight of controlling the ball, but they're only 6 of 15 from the line, so their defense has really done the job for them in the tournament trail. Absolutely, and we see a foul right here before the ball's inbounded. But, yeah, and it's been stout tonight. Sure. We said both ways, a 32-27 game. Girls working really hard. Uh, the, the shooting percentages have improved, obviously, in the second half as we've put some points on the board. But again, right now it comes down to execution uh, defensively and offensively. Hopewell out and looked to, to try and get full court pressure to be effective for them here with 1.22 to go. Ackman, he gets it into Souter. Souter finds Nesby. Nesby gets it into the front court. Ackman, he pressured out top. We're down to 1.12 to go here in the game. Grove leads 32-27. Now we've got pressure as Souter gets the ball. She finds Nesby and she overthrows it, but the ball is corralled and it's going to go out of bounds. And Brent Hemp, or Brent Fortman, excuse me, tried to get it, but it just goes off the hands of Fortman and it hits our booth here and it'll go back to Hopewell Loudon. What I like with that possession for Grove, they were not, they, they kept looking at the basket trying to find a sure. look and they had something there. They just didn't connect with the pass. They'll go into Carly Kaufman. Carly Kaufman tries to take it off the glass, and it rolls off the rim. Ball comes down to Ockmoody. Ockmoody gets it out to Souter. Souter will cross it over to Clement, and they collide. Clement and Daniel collide, and they help each other up, and they're going to get Ashley Daniel on the foul. We saw that possession right there for Hopewell Loudon before the foul going into Kaufman, and that was a concern for Coach Schrader. Being able to contain her tonight, she only has five points. She averages 12. As we see the block call right here, Sage Clement going to go to the free throw line. But you got to give credit to Nicole Nesby. She has done an outstanding job on Carly Kaufman tonight. She absolutely has. So Sage Clement will go to the line. And the dogs are up 32-27, 45 seconds to go. Shot goes up, and it's good, and that's a big, big-time free throw there. Makes that's it, a yep, makes it famous a, recipe yep, chicken sorry. free throw. <laughs> You're fine. Makes it a two-possession game, and also Sage Clement, second leading free throw shooter at 67%. And she's the glue girl. We've seen it tonight. She's been tough defensively, hit a couple big threes, hits both free throws right there. Glue girl for this Grove Lady Bulldog team. That's a great way to put it as they lead 34-27. 
So there's a nice left-handed shot there by Battle Cheese as she turns the corner there and knocks in the left-handed shot with 37 seconds to go. Grove leads 34-29. So right now, Dave, if you're Columbus Grove and you're Coach Schrader, you're telling your kids, look, if we can control the ball, not turn it over and knock free throws in, we're going to win this game. Yeah, but you got to move and cut. You can't yeah. stand still. you got to want the basketball in this situation. Again, let's let's call a spade a spade. Sure. Lauren Ockmoody is the leader offensively for this squad, but seniors Jalen Souter, Bryn Fortman, Sage Clement, they don't need to take a second, uh, uh, take a back seat to anyone. They've got to be strong with the basketball. And we see Vital Chiefs right here. Really nice left hand. That's a really strong Great move. footwork right over the front of the rim. Give her credit for that one. And, and Coach Suter calls the timeout right away uh, again to set his defense. Dave, let's talk a little bit about our first game we saw tonight. And, and we got to see Kendall Braden, maybe one of the best players you and I have seen all year. Just a fabulous player. And she's led her Eagles into the regional championship. Yeah, the junior for Toledo Christian. She was as good as advertised. And uh, she averages 23 points a game at 21, I believe, against yes, the Knights she did. tonight. And. Uh, She's a gym rat, you can tell with the moves that she put on the floor. You see the semifinal bracket here. Toledo Christian has already put their name on the line to play in the championship game this Saturday at 1 p.m. This one's still in doubt with 37.6. So Grove tried to go long baseball pass, but they'll stick with the inbounds pass on the side. Here comes Ockmoody up the side of the floor. She gets it across the timeline, goes into Nesby. Nesby puts it up, and she scores! Nicole Nesby knocks in the jumper to make it 36-29 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard with 21 seconds to go. Is that the nail, the proverbial nail to drive home? Three ball on the way from Brickner off the left, and she oh. nails it! Are you kidding me, Sydney Brickner? Knocks in the three to make it 36-32 with 14 seconds to go. So I thought this one was over with the deuce by Nesby. And here comes Brickner, nails the three. Yeah. Another Dale's concrete three. Sydney Brickner rolling snake eyes from <laughs> distance. Has five points in the game now, but she shot that one with no hesitation whatsoever, Danny. <laughs> That's right. We're, I think we're going to scare Mark Allstadter. We're screaming over here. Does he? I don't know if he hears us or not, but he's he's writing away. <laughs> writing for the Lima News. Getting his article written right here and ready to go. But he doesn't, just like the rest of us, he doesn't know how it's going to play out. He's got alternate endings ready to go, Danny. He's that good. <laughs> he is that good. <laughs> so here you see. Watch this three by Sydney Brickner, the left-handed sniper, knocks in the triple. So here we go, folks, 14.7 seconds to go. You know Hopewell Loudon's going to have to foul immediately if they don't get the steal. Let's see how this one plays out. They're off the ball looking to deny everything, trying to get the five-second call. And Coach Schrader's going to take a timeout, a little worried on that one because <sighs> there was some heavy pressure there. So... You know, Dave, what is he telling his kids right now with 14 seconds to go? we got to cut hard, set your screen, cut hard, and then the screener needs to roll back hard to the basketball because more often than not, than not on a switch, that's who's going to be open. But you got to make sure you see what you see, and we still have one timeout. So if we can't get it in, we can use that and then set our offensive uh, game plan again getting the ball out of and bounds. And if you're hope well allowed and you're fouling immediately, well, there's, there's no time to waste. No, not at all. you got to get that foul. Don't want to have any time go off the clock. Again, hope well allowed and a nice job. They're not guarding the ball out of bounds, so they have an extra defender. And I do think in this situation, Columbus Grove, you're not looking to go long. You want to make that fundamental pass to a teammate who will get fouled immediately, and you're going to look for your best free throw shooters. Akmudi at 70%. And then you're going to look at Sage Clement at 67%. So here go the dogs with 14 seconds to go. They'll inbounds underneath the basket. They'll get it into Nesby. Nesby turns and faces the defense, and they'll get a foul immediately. And they'll get that foul on Kaylee Malagon for Hopewell Loudon. So and we're we into one in the bonus. So these are big for Nesby. She is a 53% free throw shooter. So Nicole Nesby will go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe is our free throw sponsor tonight. Get chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. She hustled right down here to the free throw line. See if she shoots it with confidence. Shot goes up, and she knocks that one in. So the freshman shows no fear right there. Absolutely. Great job by Nesby. Again, a growth piece here, a freshman. Elida Fieldhouse, oh, regional semi. 
Second on the way, and Woo. just like the first one, no fear from Nesby. Here come the Chieftains. They'll bring it down. We're under 10 seconds. This is Olivia Bishop. Shot goes up. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Akmudi. Akmudi's just going to hold it. She'll be fouled, and that may do it, partner, and with 3.4 seconds to go. And the Grove contingent on their feet, cheering on their, their Bulldogs. Up six with 3.4. Lauren Ockmoody going to go to the free throw line, and there's a reason she didn't give that basketball up. Best free throw shooter for Columbus Grove, right at 70%. Ockmoody has had a sensational second half, and Coach Suter is doing the right thing. He is getting his kids out of the ball game to get that applause and get some of those other kids in the record book. He realizes with 3.4 seconds to go that he's pretty much out. <laughs> So Ock Moody will take the first one. Knocks that one down, and she makes it 39-32 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. She's got 14 on the night to lead all scores. Second one on the way, and she knocks that one in. Makes it 40-32 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Hopewell Loudon will bring it up the floor. They'll take the last shot from half court, and it'll be off the mark. So that'll do it from the Elida Fieldhouse. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs knock off the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains 40-32, to and they've set up a match with the Toledo Christian Eagles. Yeah, Columbus Grove, they had a great third quarter. We talked about the first four minutes of the third quarter. They own that, and uh, with that, 18-6 to third quarter, they were ahead by seven. They win by eight. Congratulations to Columbus Grove. We see the bracket. You're in the Elite Eight. Chance to play for the Final Four now. Toledo Christian, Columbus Grove. Going to be an exciting game Saturday. I'm excited to see what happens. Absolutely. Danny. So the Grove Bulldogs punch their ticket to the regional finals with a 40 to 32 win. For Dave Bowen, I'm Danny Holbrook and our entire WSN crew saying we'll see you down the tournament trail.